Today, I'm at the Chicken Processing Facility to talk about problems with namespaces and build order, and how Cavium's coding guidelines were used to solve such issues. Our state-of-the-art facility contains a chicken pot pie block that takes as its inputs chickens, gravy, vegetables, and pastry dough. It outputs yummy chicken pot pies ready to eat, and some feather waste. Naturally, we have created a chicken agent with a chicken driver, sequencer, monitor, and sequence item. We have similar agents for gravy, vegetables, and pastry. We decided to use convenient three-letter prefixes to distinguish one object from another, but we're not too good at flaky crusts around here, so we outsource the pastry agent. Unfortunately, upper management engaged the CHX Corporation for pastry delivery, and they like to name all of their agents CHX. Uh-oh. We can't have two CHX agents. We'll have to recode everything. The plucking sequence alone is 4,000 lines. This situation is called a namespace collision. And in System Verilog, we use packages to avoid this. Packages enclose all of our classes and types in a protective layer that does not expose their names to other packages. We can enclose all of our CHX classes in the CHX package. Inside, we can put our CHX driver, monitor, sequencer, and all things chicken. Then we can isolate our pastry vendor by giving it a PST package. Now we will never have a namespace collision again, as long as we never do one thing. This is a bad idea. It is so egregiously bad that we have outlawed its use here at Cavium. More precisely, we only allow people to import one and only one package using this notation. The UVM package is a special exception because the creators of UVM do not conform to our conventions even though they should. There's an old coding adage that says explicit is better than implicit, so all classes outside of our CHX package must use the explicit scoping operator. It's a bit redundant, though, don't you think? CHX package, CHX agent. After all, I don't introduce myself as Brian Brian Hunter. So here's a neat thing to do that also saves you some keystrokes, which along with Tasty Pot Pie is among my favorite things to save. Instead of calling our agent a CHX agent, Let's just call it an agent, and our driver is a driver, our monitor is a monitor, and so on. This may seem absurd at first, but check this. Inside of our package, we don't have to use the scoping operator. Now, every agent we write starts to look very familiar. They all have drivers that deliver items sent to them by sequencers. And sure, when our environment instantiates these components, we'll need to use the explicit scoping operator. But in reality, most of the references we do to classes are internal to their package. The naked truth of it is that you're probably not very likely to have such a namespace conflict on your class names. Where you're far more likely to see them is with your enumerated types. What happens when somebody's turkey agent decides to use the same names? Namespace conflict. Isolate your code in separate packages instead, and your problem is solved. All components inside the package won't need the scoping operator and won't need a prefix either. Outside the package, in a test for example, you would use the scoping operator. Now let's chat for a moment about build order. System Verilog reads files in the order that they are seen. Your agent needs to refer to your driver, monitor, and sequencer, each of which refers to the sequence item, which the sequences in the sequence library deliver. The sequencer may launch its own sequences, and of course we got TLM ports in the agent, and they have items that go here, and our enumerated types. And like the old saying, everyone flies out of Atlanta. Clearly, with all of these dependencies and an ever-changing code base, this is a catastrophe waiting to happen. There actually is a foolproof way. Inside our package, you may tick include each file in a random order. Put them in there as you write them, or alphabetically, or tallest to shortest. It actually doesn't matter. Now, in every file, use include guards to ensure that the file is only included once and then tick include only the files that it depends upon. Presto, all of your build order problems will now disappear. What, you don't believe me? Okay, there is one possible hiccup, and these are called cyclical dependencies. An example of a cyclical dependency is if your sequencer launches its own sequences, and your sequences need to refer to the sequencer. Then you have a cyclical dependency. But this special case is easily solved. That's called a forward declaration. It's your way of telling the compiler, look, buddy, I got this class, see, and don't worry about what it does, because I swear I'll tell you more about it later. 
The chicken agent delivers chickens through a CHX interface, which is really just a glorified version of a conveyor belt with assertions. If the interfaces that a package works with are defined by your verification environment and closely associated with the functions of a specific package, then it makes sense to bundle them together. However, interfaces are actually tricky because you cannot define them in a package. They're more like modules, and the rule we have with modules is you can't have a namespace collision on them. It's just not allowed. It's like dividing by zero or putting too much salt in your gravy. You just can't do it. Give these interfaces unique names and try to give them the same prefix as the package they belong with. At Cabium, we bundle the package and their interfaces together into something we call a vKit. vKits contain all of your code that may ever be used in more than one test bench. Since our gravy vKit can be used for both chicken pot pies and turkey pot pies, this facilitates vertical reuse. Since the gravy will be needed in the next versions of CPP, vKits can be used for horizontal reuse as well. We organize our vKits by putting all the files in the same directory and coupling them with an flist file that can be compiled with most simulators. A given test bench may rely upon several vKits, and vKits may depend upon other vKits. If your chicken and vegetable vKits both need to reference something in the gravy vKit, then they must be given to the simulator in order. However, it is a requirement that no cyclical dependencies exist among vKits. You can create one vKit filled with global components that all test benches must have, and another filled with common utilities and other components. These appear first in the dependency list so that all other vKits can refer to them. And the last component in the list is the test bench itself. Just add it to the bottom of your flist. Then, just put these flists on your simulator command line during compilation. Or swap in a different test bench. Since the organization of these vKits may later be repeated, we can put the environment that knits them together into its own vKit. Now we can simulate the whole factory floor together with all of our block-level vKits. By organizing your code into packages and vKits, by tick including each file's dependencies, and by using include guards in every non-package file, you can eliminate some of the headaches around integrating with multiple code sources and make everyone happy. Except the chickens. Thank you for listening, and remember, Cavium is looking for super smart people. So if you've got a big giant brain and you love a good challenge, we are hiring for verification jobs in both San Jose and Boston. Feel free to send a resume to the email address below.